Hi, I'm Bob. Today, let's learn Chapter Thirteen, Game Theory. In this chapter, we will learn the static games and the dynamic games. We will learn the basic concepts in game theory, such as payoffs, strategy, and Nash equilibrium. We will use the normal form representation and the game tree to analyze a game. Game theory is a set of tools used by economists to analyze strategic decision making. Game theory has many practical applications. Economists use it to study how oligopolistic firms set prices, quantities, and advertising levels. Bargaining between unions and management, or between the buyer and seller. And for many other economic interactions, a game is an interaction between players, such as individuals or firms, in which players use strategies. A strategy is a plan that specifies the actions or moves that a player will make, conditional on the information available, and for any possible contingency. Payoffs are the benefits received by players from a game's outcome, such as profits for firms and incomes or utilities for individuals. A payoff function specifies each player's payoff as a function of the strategies chosen by all players. The rules of the game include the timing of players' moves, such as whether one player moves first. The various actions that are possible at a particular point in the game, and possibly other specific aspects of how the game is played. In a static game, each player acts only once, and the players act simultaneously, or at least each player acts without knowing its rival's actions. In a dynamic game, players move either. Repeatedly or sequentially, in a repeated game, a basic component game is repeated perhaps many times. In a sequential game, one player moves before another moves, possibly making alternating moves, as in chess or tic-tac-toe. If the players have complete information, the strategies and payoffs of the game are common knowledge. We begin by examining static games, in which the players choose their actions simultaneously, have complete information about the payoff function, and play the game once. The normal form representation of a static game is the payoff matrix. It specifies the players in the game, their possible strategies, and the payoffs. For each combination of strategies, a dominant strategy produces a higher payoff than any other strategy the player can use for every possible combination of its rival's strategies. For example, in this prisoner's dilemma game. The high output strategy is American Airlines' dominant strategy. Whichever strategy the United Airlines uses, Americans' profit is higher if it uses its high output strategy. By the same type of reasoning, the United's high output strategy is also a dominant strategy because the high output strategy is. A dominant strategy for both firms. We can predict that the outcome of this game is the pair of high output strategies. A striking feature of this game is that the players choose strategies that do not maximize their joint profit. In the prisoner's dynamic game, all players have 
dominant strategies that lead to a profit that is inferior to what they could achieve if they cooperated and pursued alternative strategies. The best response is the strategy that maximizes a player's payoff, given its beliefs about its rival strategies. A set of strategies is a Nash equilibrium if, when all other players use these strategies, no player can attain a higher payoff by choosing a different strategy. In other words, no player has an incentive to deviate from its strategy. If a game has a dominant strategy solution, then that solution must be a Nash equilibrium. However, many games that do not have dominant strategy solutions have a Nash equilibrium. For example, in this game, neither American nor United has a single dominant strategy. But we can find a Nash equilibrium by using a two-step procedure. First, we determined each firm's best response to any given strategy of the other firm. Second, we determined if any pairs of strategies are best responses for both firms, so that the pair of strategies is the Nash equilibrium. Both firms choose the quantity of 64. It's a Nash equilibrium because given that its rival uses this strategy. Neither firm wants to deviate from its strategy. Many games have more than one Nash equilibrium. In this entry game, we can identify two Nash equilibria. Firm 1 enters and Firm 2 does not enter, or Firm 2 enters and Firm 1 does not enter. Each is a Nash equilibrium because Given its rival's strategy, neither firm wants to ch change its behavior or deviate from its strategy. If a firm uses a pure strategy, it chooses a single action. In addition to using a pure strategy, a firm may employ a mixed strategy, in which the player chooses among possible actions according to probabilities the player assigns. A pure strategy assigns a probability of one to a single action, whereas a mixed strategy is a probability distribution over actions. A major difference between static games and dynamic games is that dynamic games require us to distinguish between strategies and actions. An action is a single move that a player makes at a specified time, such as choosing an output level or price. A strategy is a plan that specifies the full set of actions that a player will make throughout the game and may involve actions that are conditional on prior actions of other players or on the additional information available at a given time. We consider two types of dynamic games. We start with a repeated or multi-period game in which a single period simultaneous move game such as the prisoner's dynamic game is repeated at least twice and possibly many times. In a repeated game a firm can influence its rival's behavior by signaling or threatening to punish. Collusion or cooperation is therefore more likely in a game that will continue forever or one that will end at an uncertain time. In a sequential game, we can use an extensive form diagram or game tree to show the order of the firm's moves 
each firm's possible actions at the time of its move, and the resulting profits at the end of the game. A set of strategies forms a subgate perfect Nash equilibrium if the player strategies are Nash equilibrium in every subgame. We can solve for the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium using backward induction, where we first determine the best response by the last player to move. Next, determine the best response for the player who make the next to last move and then repeat the process until we reach the first move of the game. For a firm's strategy to be a credible threat, rivals must believe that the firm's strategy is rational, in the sense that it is in the firm's best interest to use it. A firm may be able to make its threatened behavior believable if it acts before the other. An auction is a sale in which a good or service is sold to the highest bidder. Virtually all options are variants of the English option, the Dutch option, and the sealed bid option. We normally assume that people are rational in the sense that they optimize using all available information. However, they may be subject to psychological biases and may have limited powers of calculation that causes them to act irrationally. Such possibilities are the domain of behavioral economics, which seeks to augment the rational economic model so as to better understanding and predict economic decision making. One example is the ultimatum game, where one person, the proposer, makes a take it or leave it offer to the responder. The game is based on dividing $10 each proposer makes an ultimatum offer to the responder of a particular amount. The rational subgate perfect solution using backward induction is that the proposer offers the lowest possible positive amount and the responder accepts it. However, such rational behavior is not a good predictor of actual outcomes. The most common range for offers is between $3 and $4, far more than the rational minimum offer. Thank you very much for watching this video.